Sarcoidosis is a rare chronic inflammatory disease characterized by the growth of granulomas in the lungs. These growths can also occur in other parts of the body, including the lymph nodes, liver, spleen, eyes, skin, and central nervous system. There is no cure for sarcoidosis, but the disease can often be managed with medication and lifestyle changes. In fact, one important lifestyle change is your diet. That's right, there are certain foods that can help reduce inflammation and ease sarcoidosis symptoms, while others unfortunately can make them worse. And that is the topic of this video. Keep watching because we're going to share the best and worst foods to eat for sarcoidosis. So if you're ready, let's get into it. A healthy, well-balanced diet is essential for improving your overall health. This is especially true for those with chronic conditions such as sarcoidosis. The best diet for sarcoidosis is one that's high in anti-inflammatory foods and low in foods that are known to cause inflammation in the body. That is because chronic inflammation contributes to several disease processes, including those that affect the lungs. So, with that said, here are some of the best foods for sarcoidosis that you can consider adding to your diet. Some examples include fish, poultry, apples, citrus fruits, bananas, leafy greens, tomatoes, bell peppers, blueberries, turmeric, ginger, salmon, flax seeds, avocado, and nuts. Again, the best diet for sarcoidosis includes fresh fruits and vegetables that are high in antioxidant properties. Lean meats such as poultry and fish are also beneficial. And you may also benefit from eating more healthy fats and foods that are high in magnesium. Furthermore, staying hydrated by drinking plenty of water is also essential. So now that you know some of the best foods to eat, next we need to discuss the foods that you should avoid. As previously mentioned, there are several healthy foods that can help prevent or alleviate sarcoidosis symptoms. However, unfortunately, many popular foods of the typical Western diet have inflammatory effects that can worsen this condition. Some examples include fast food, refined grains, trans fats, omega-6 fatty acids, foods high in sulfites, dried fruits and vegetables, vinegar, pickled fruits and vegetables, shellfish, alcoholic beverages, tobacco, processed meats, dairy products, red meat, and too much caffeine. Again, the foods that should be avoided with sarcoidosis include those with high levels of sugar, sodium, omega-6 fats, and saturated fat. In addition, it's also best to avoid fried foods and processed meats that are packed with trans fat and preservatives. Lastly, alcohol and tobacco should be avoided due to their inflammatory effects and the negative impact that they have on our body systems, of course, including the lungs. Now, let's take a closer look at sarcoidosis, including its causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and the available treatment options. First, let's talk about the causes. Sarcoidosis occurs when the body's immune system overreacts and begins to attack its own cells and tissues. The exact cause of this is unknown. However, it is believed that sarcoidosis may be triggered by an infection, allergies, or exposure to certain chemicals or substances. Some researchers believe that this condition is caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Next up is the signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of sarcoidosis may vary depending on which organs are affected. However, in general, the most common symptoms include coughing, shortness of breath, skin rashes, wheezing, chest pain, fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, weight loss, pain or swelling in joints red eyes, headache, and an abnormal heart rhythm. Each person experiences symptoms differently. Some people have mild symptoms that go away on their own, while others may experience more severe symptoms that require medical intervention. Now, let's talk about the diagnosis. Sarcoidosis can be difficult to diagnose because its symptoms are similar to those of other diseases. A diagnosis is usually made based on a combination of a person's symptoms, physical examination, and test results. Some of the most common tests used to diagnose sarcoidosis include a chest x-ray, CT scan, bronchoscopy, lung biopsy, pulmonary function testing, auscultation, skin assessment, lymph node assessment, blood and urine tests, electrocardiogram, 
eye exam, PET scan, and an MRI. And that leads us to the treatment for sarcoidosis. Unfortunately, there is no cure for this disease. However, treatment can help control the symptoms and prevent the disease from getting worse. Some of the most common treatment methods include corticosteroids, which are anti-inflammatory drugs that can help reduce swelling and inflammation. Immunosuppressants, which are drugs that can help suppress the immune system and prevent it from attacking healthy cells and tissues. Surgery, which in some cases may be necessary to remove affected organs or tissue. Hydroxychloroquine, which is a drug that helps treat skin lesions and can also improve lung function. Tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors, which are drugs known for treating rheumatoid arthritis, but they can also be effective in treating sarcoidosis that has not responded to other treatments. And last but not least, close monitoring, which is important because even if a patient is not receiving treatment, it's important to monitor their condition to ensure that it does not progress. Some other treatment methods that may be helpful include physical therapy, occupational therapy, and pulmonary rehabilitation. These programs are designed to help manage symptoms and improve the patient's quality of life. And of course, your diet and the foods you put into your body can play a major role in your symptoms and the outcome of this disease. The key takeaway is eat more foods with antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties while avoiding foods that are known for causing chronic inflammation throughout the body. Your lungs and respiratory system will greatly appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching, have a blessed day, and as always, breathe easy, my friend.